What is up, everybody, NC? JC and... We got a question, everything for you guys. And this is a part of something we have called Nazi Month. We've been talking about it for a while. We're finally going to give it to you guys. So we have a four-part series on the Nazis. And this first part is based on the leader of the Nazis, Adolf Hitler. Now, a lot of you guys may know about his experience in the war. And a lot of you may be aware of his military strategy, the Holocaust camps, you know, the basic stuff you would learn in history class or on a History Channel documentary. That's the basic stuff that you would learn. We want to talk about the stuff that you may or may have not heard of. Adolf Hitler is a very strange guy. So we're yeah. going to break down why he was such a strange motherfucker. So I got to ask you, what is some of the strange stuff that Adolf Hitler was into? He was into some really weird stuff. So, of course, he had a love for art. So he was a painter. He used to paint. Really loved dogs. Had a great fixation for German shepherds. But beyond that artistic side, he had a very dark side. He was very much into the occult. Right. And he was very much into doing black magic and dark arts and all that stuff that gets negative energy going. And what he established is something called the Vril Society. The Vril Society was a collaboration of the highest level magicians, psychics, anybody who works with the manipulation of the mind, anybody who works in that category, physicists even, just all these weird categories combined together. And he would do these group seances where he would ask dead spirits for guidance on what to do in certain situations and for military planning and whatnot. And during one of these seances, they apparently contacted a very negative entity from another dimension and started working with them very closely and their group. And because of that, that led to rapid military advancements that far surpassed even what America had at the time. Right. Because keep in mind, right around the time that Nazi Germany really started booming with their technological phase is right around the time Roswell crash happened. So it was at a time of great disclosure that was being kept under wraps. And trust me, Germany had its own fair share of UFO crashes that was happening and they were taking technology and trying to reverse engineering way before they got this dark deal done with the Viral Society, way, way before that. So as part of that deal, what happened is they exchanged basically biology for technology. They were the first group to do that. And they had no problem taking their own people and even refugees, Polish refugees, and using them as part of experiments. And that's something that if you look back at Operation Paperclip, which we will disclose further on in the series, you will see that they took a guy, Joseph Menegli, who was well known for his experiments on humans. And they were cruel and inhumane. And the reason why he was doing these weird experiments is to see what they could do with the human body, but also to please their overlords as well, because he worked very closely with them. So I got to get into the thing you just brought up there. Right. What is this entities? What are these group of entities that he contacted that gave the Nazis the technology that they had? They are a certain group of the reptilians called the Draco reptilians, and they are a race that has been very influential and powerful on Earth for a very long time. And they have had a large power stake. And I think they just needed the right leader to deal with. And Hitler was right up their alley. I mean, he had no problem killing people. He had no problem fulfilling a dark agenda. And being the fact he was into black magic and being the fact that they are negative entities and they feed off negative energies that pretty much fed into each other. And they made perfect allies. And it was to the point that Hitler had no problem sacrificing his own people and Polish refugees and, and other refugees from other countries to the advancement of technology. So you kind of brought up a little bit earlier with the Vril Society. Right. And what they would do is they would channel spirits. They would channel other entities. Is this how Hitler came in contact with the Draco Reptilians? Yeah, that's how he came in contact with them. And it was basically by them tapping into something that they shouldn't have. Right. And because they did, they started working with these entities. And like I said, exchange biology for technology. And what they got in technology is they got a lot of stuff that was very far advanced for their time. They had a machine called the Bell, which was very early time travel. I know that the U.S. was fucking around with the Philadelphia experiment around that time, but this is something that far surpassed what they were working on because it actually worked. Right. It didn't leave one of their guys cut off in half, you know, right, on yeah. the return. Now, this actually worked. Now, granted, the people that used the machine because it was very radioactive at the time mm -hmm. had cancer from it, but it did, in fact, work. And this is how they were able to go back and change history throughout periods of time. And you'll notice this with a lot of German names. 
like the Berenstein Bears would be a perfect one. Right. And then another one, Oscar Mayer. Mm-hmm. You'll notice this with a lot of German names. They changed over time. And people were saying that it was the Mandela effect. No. And because they had time travel way before any other country that had them in a huge lead over other countries. This is power here. Yeah. And this is stuff that people don't believe in, but it's stuff that helped them gain power and helped them gain advances. And not only that, but they were the first nation to have flying craft that operated. Like the U.S., it took them a very long time to learn how to reverse engineer. The Germans were right away with it. Well, and they were already starting with hovercrafts of their own. Yes, they like were. primitive ones. Very they, primitive. Like air propeller ones. Mm-hmm. They had things that looked like flying saucers. Totally. And actually operated like flying saucers. Yep. So they had this technology yep. a while back, back in the 40s. And like I said, they got it through their connections. And it's the type of thing where the U.S. was so perplexed on how to apply this technology. Because trust me, after the Roswell crash, they really tried to reverse engineer these crafts and they found out that it was just so fucking hard they didn't understand it that's why they had to bring in guys like ron yeah who understood this type of technology into nasa as part of operation paperclip and help them show this is how you operate this shit it's not easy it's not something that you do overnight you have to have experience with it and being the fact that he probably worked directly with these entities it helped in his case it did absolutely and so i would have to then ask you why is it that he was allowed to get into power Hitler. Adolf Hitler was allowed to get in power because of his family roots. Now, it's widely rumored that he was a Rothschild that was born as a Rothschild, but then they basically had him raised underneath another family and that he was raised to be a military leader and raised to be a certain way. And he was definitely groomed for this role. And there's a reason why he was groomed for this role, because he's a ruthless, charismatic leader. And that's the type of people they want at the top, somebody who is cruel, heartless. And the fact that he really embraced the dark arts really helped, I think, to aid that. Because there's been stories from back when they first signed the Declaration of Independence that George Washington and Benjamin Franklin would do satanic orgies. To add under that, look at the Hellfire Club. Look it up. Started by Benjamin Franklin. Mm -hmm. So this is something that has been around for a very long time is the whole praising of dark deities to gain power. It's something that has existed for a very long time, and it's nothing new with the rise of the Third Reich and how they had the power that they did and how they rose so quickly to prominence. Exactly. Yeah, so that's really what I really wanted to ask. And then what I also wanted to ask is really want to talk about how the Nazis, especially Adolf Hitler, was able to almost take over the world. Now, the reason why he was almost able to take over the world had a lot to do with who he was serving and the power that they hold behind the scenes. Well, and then why they also stopped him. Okay, so the reason why they stopped him is because they wanted him to do his shit underground. They felt that, you know what, okay, we're still going to allow you to be in power, but we want you to kind of do your stuff other places. You know, we think that you fulfilled your position here. Mm -hmm. And more than anything, it was a great chance for Hitler to kill off himself I mean, technically, one of his doppelgangers was killed off. It wasn't him. He had at least over 10 doppelgangers. This is fact. You can go and look this shit up. Mm -hmm. So he had multiple doppelgangers. He had one of them killed off in the bunker. Mm -hmm. That's what happened. Okay. And then he personally, after that, he went on what I think was a personal journey. Because he, at heart, has always been one of those guys who's been an explorer. He loves to travel. And one thing he really wanted to do is he wanted to find all these crazy places in South America where they did crazy magic. Right. I mean, this has been talked about in Peru. It's been talked about in Brazil. It's been talked about in Bolivia. I mean, all over South America, there's spots where they've done a lot of magic rituals, a lot of crazy stuff. And I think he wanted to tap into that because he's always been into the occult. And it's said that he retired in Argentina. That's where it said that he retired was in Argentina, but he went on from there and he went on to other places and the other place that he went. And I just want to go ahead and cover it right now is Antarctica and Antarctica is a place that you would think is very inhospitable. But the thing about it is, is Antarctica has a lot of natural caverns built in and a lot of underground areas where you can pretty much burrow deep and you can encapsulate yourself and it's not that cold. 
it's livable. So that's what they started doing is they built an underground base over in Antarctica. And the main reason why he always wanted to go there is he had a big fascination with Middle Earth. Like more than anything, he really wanted to get into Middle Earth and go to Agartha and meet the quote unquote leader of the world and all the other stories that came from there. See the lush vegetation. You know, he wanted to see all this stuff. So he made an expedition there. I mean, he had the Nazi U-boats, which are pretty much submarines, mm -hmm. have no problem going there. So he went to Antarctica and he heard that there were two openings, one in the North Pole, one in the South Pole. Gigantic fucking gaping hole entrances right. that you will not find on Google Maps. They will be blocked out. Isn't that kind of interesting? They blur it out on Google Maps. Yep. Isn't that a little bit interesting? Mm-hmm. Gigantic openings. So fucking big you can fly a plane into them. Why blur it? Right. What's the point of that? Well, and that's the story about Admiral Byrd. Mm -hmm. If you guys haven't heard about this, is that Admiral Byrd claims that he flew a plane directly into the center of the Earth, met the leader of the world, and that's what Adolf Hitler wanted to do. He wanted to meet the leader of the world. He wanted to go to Middle Earth. This is something that has always been his fascination. And he's always been fascinated with underground society, too, underground cities, underground bases. He did it way back in the day in Germany, he had a ton of underground bases there, a lot of underground bunkers, and he carried that on to South America, another area filled with underground cities. So then he finally went to Antarctica, really established his operation there. And this is something that I want you guys to check out about Antarctica is a truly evil place. I mean, Buzz Aldrin even talked about it before his death. He absolutely did. Something he, evil is there. That's what he said. Yeah. That's what he said. And you have to think about, okay, well, why is Antarctica still a roped off continent? I mean, just, why aren't people allowed to go there? A lot of people don't know this, but it's actually guarded off by uh, the U.S. government. Yeah, the entire continent is guarded off by the U.S. government. Isn't that strange? Mm -hmm. Well, if anything, it shows you the connection with Nazi Germany and the U.S. government. Mm-hmm. And what they're, trying, clip. what they're trying to protect, exactly. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of stuff that's going down in Antarctica, and a lot of the reasons why they do their dirty shit in Antarctica is because it's secluded. You can have crafts flying around. You can have crazy shit going on underground. Nobody's going to see. No. Nobody's going to hear. No. no, not at all. Seclusion. And that's, I think, what they wanted more than anything. And that's what Adolf, I think, wanted more than anything, especially after being chased out of South America. That's the big rumor is that the U.S. government came after him in South America once they found out where his holdout was, mm -hmm. and they chased him over to Antarctica. And then once they actually came to Antarctica, and Bird talked about this, he talked about how they got obliterated by flying saucers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So and this is back in 1947. The Nazis, this is the story that he told, is that the Nazis came at them with flying saucers and shot their B-52s down. Wow. He had a squad of them, too. Wow. That's the one thing, the one area that's not been explored very much is Antarctica, or as much as it could be, especially with the North and South Pole. Right. A lot of crazy stuff with Hitler, man. Absolutely. He is a crazy dude, and we're only going to shed more layers on this guy. We're talking about the person here, but in the coming weeks, we're going to start talking about what his movement spawned, because it didn't just end with Adolf Hitler. No, it kept on going further, yeah. and it got really crazy. So keep an eye out for future question of things coming to you about the Nazis. So this has been NC, JC, and peace out.